Welcome to part five of Brian and the Grail. This is Watch Complications. I am, in fact, Brian. What we're gonna do is take the up close look at the two watches, the macro view of the Binger and the Reef Tiger, and decide, well, which one really is good quality. Good quality. Which one is better than the other. Okay, so the first watch we're gonna look at up close is the Binger, and we'll get an idea of the quality of the finishing. As I mentioned, I will put a bunch of pictures on my website and blog post with this as well so you can get some static images but you can see already you know as I've got this under the macro lens that it's quite um, all right for you know being a lower cost watch under 100 bucks and the, the finishing is is all right it's pretty good so let's look up really close I actually like the texture the sort of the rougher texture on certain parts of the the dial i really like the hands on this watch uh, they're extremely crisp in both the polishing and the application of the loom it's not great loom but it um, is well done of course it says 45 joules and i'm not sure if that's an exaggeration or reality there are you know multiple complications involved here and then they've got the extra decorative flywheel but it seems like a high number to me, and you're never exactly sure unless you were to take it apart and count them. I've seen that number embellished before on like fossil watches and stuff like that, where they say a jewel count and it's just not accurate. It's just, and of course, it's not all necessary. Even if that is how many are in it, it's certainly not necessary. Um, you can see there's these loom markers. If you look right there next to the 10 right above it, you'll see that there's a little smoother white surface on top of the texture dial that's loom again i'll show a picture of that on the site so you can see what that looks like in the in the dark the printing is fairly crisp the printing of the stars and the moon is a little bit fuzzy which again it's not a expensive moon phase implementation anyway so not a huge deal, looks fine on the wrist. I would not get this wet. <laughs> Maybe a, a raindrop here or there. That's about it. You can see there's printing, there's an, it's actually well done. You can see there's a little thin line between the two wheels. You can see those screws look fine. They're not chipped or dented or marks or anything they look to be in perfectly fine shape you know the brushing isn't perfect if you look at this metal ring with the numerals applied like you can see there's one little bigger white dot in there and that's one spot that i noticed on the dial just with the eye you can see it there but there are worse things. Zoom in a little bit. Uh, the numerals are pretty well done. Okay, so let's take a look at it on the back. Machining is much better on this than on the Reef Tiger. I like how they did the sandblasted background here with the polishing. I wish they had done that all the way around with all the information, but they didn't. See the B there. Again, looking a little bit closer at the screws. I like this one here. It's got three lines in it. It's kind of kind of cool looking. Can you see all the screws look to be in good shape? I'll try to get those in the light for you here. You know, no one's slipping with the screwdriver and chipping things and whatnot. Big rotor. Again, kind of just all right in terms of the machining. And of course, it's not Swiss, but it is better than some I've seen. You 
you see the you know the binger logo which is just this b um there it's on the crown and then the name on the front one of the particular things i liked about this model was that this text for the name wasn't a big eyesore in a lot of their models which i wouldn't buy anyway just because i'm not going to spend a bunch of money on this brand or these these types of watches this is just for the specific you know task i have at hand but this at least was one of the models that it's smaller, more subtle, not a big in your face. Hey, we're being here. Blah, blah, blah. So again, in terms of these wheels, or escapements, one is decorative and one is working. So the one on the left, when you're looking at the dial face, this one over here is connected to the movement, the actual timekeeping, whereas this one over here on the right is decorative. So if we flip this around, and I will do my best to show you this up close, but notice here. So here is the one that is on the left when you're looking at it from the front. This is the working escapement. Notice you can see the pinion in here, right here. Here is one of the gears, part of the, the motion works and you can see it is turning. By the way, this little wheel up here, this little gear, if I turn the rotor, you'll notice it spins. That's to ch help charge the mainspring, but this is part of the motion works here, and so this escapement is connected to the movement. On this side, notice there's that same gap here, but there's no wheel. You have things you know moving as sort of you normally would see but there's no gearing that it's connected to at least from what i can tell just looking at the movement from the back without taking it apart you know with the date actually being connected to the crown i i think this is purely decorative now i'm not a hundred percent sure again i wouldn't say anything a hundred percent until i took it apart and actually see how they had it set up there's a lot of different layers um with the plates so having not taken whatever movement this is apart before, I wouldn't say 100% until I did that. But the way it looks is that, that this one on the left is uh, fully functioning normally, and this one is purely decorative over here on the right. So there's that. Again, I wanna show the screws. They look to all be in you know, brand new tip top shape, you know, scratching around them from you know, the assembly, um, no chipping, denting, like this uh, rotor is big and you feel the wobble from it when you wear it as i mentioned it's got the cutouts in it so you can see more of the movement if you're choosing to look at it from the reverse like so up close view these pushers see there's little indentations in there hard to push with your finger but toothpick works just fine Brown, small given the case, hard to turn, not much of a grip you can get on that. Yeah. So let's look at the Reef Tiger up close and see how it compares in terms of this macro view. All right, now to compare the Binger with the Reef Tiger. Now. When we look at this up close, you're going to notice that the quality of finishing isn't anywhere near as good and the quality of the components, you know, good being relative, you know, this is comparing to lower end uh, manufactured watches and movements, which don't hold a candle to the real deal, I'll call it. But you can notice that the grade of metal used here is not near as good. You're going to see a lot more finishing mishaps, just the machining's not as good. I want to start with the screws just to illustrate um, what I'm talking about a little bit. Get this in the light. So notice, for example, on this one, and let me zoom in just a hair more so you can see that better. So when this one was assembled, you see they slipped with the screwdriver. 
chipped it up a little bit and what they've done is they it dented the the dial right there as well left part of the screw chipped and then this was also that way but they've taken probably what amounts to a blue marker or a blue sharpie i've i've kind of messed around with this before whenever i've uh, been working with different shades of blue on dials is they covered up tried to cover up visually so it's not as noticeable from a distance that that chip had happened so you can see that there's more notice this debris or scratch is on the inside i'm rubbing the outside of this with the toothpick um, so there's that not all the screws are messed up but a lot of them are notice this finishing this quality of metal is not near as good uh, notice you notice it with these screws on this little carousel as well just not as good quality these are basically pendulums that just swing back and forth they're weighted on one side and you can see you can see the weight it goes from here to here so they swing back and forth you know it has more of a, a tourbillon look a little bit in the sense that this is a, a an actual carousel looking thing and everything but there's no other moving components they don't stay moving um, unless your hand is moving so they don't stay wound or anything anyway like they do on the, the binger which is a, a negative in my mind notice on the inside of this one on the pendulum you can see some sort of uh, either heating when it was manufactured or you know a drop of water or some chemical or something got in there but there's some discoloration on the inside of inside of this one you can see it right there there it is a little bit unsightly um, most of the screws have little chipping or are not colored on a lot of the edges they're all fine on the binger Again, just pointing out that fact you can see there's another one it's got a little you know chip not colored there at the end and I'll repeat the machining's not near as good so if we look a little bit closer to the dial again you can see another screw it's got issues a lot of markings and scratches just from the manufacturing that just not good finishing quality period the date is super tiny on this watch hard to see from a distance that's not off or anything it's just going to be flipping in the next couple hours so that's why that's down a little bit it's, it is centered correctly um, it's just getting close to to midnight so it's slowly starting to shift on the speak marine it, of course the dial is enamel the printing on this is okay the actual timekeeping part of the dial face isn't isn't awful i mean this is okay the printing is you know fairly crisp on the the numerals and the dots and these blued hands are okay and it says automatic right there this brushing and dial work is you know average so th this is fine it's more of all of this other surrounding stuff that's just really cheaply poorly done so let's take a look at the side of the case i mentioned i don't like the rib surface one i don't like the design and two this one's pretty poorly done there's a lot of markings and stuff from the manufacturing process little dents and chips and stuff like that hard to see them in about any light unless you're just looking at it you know face to face as it were because the ribbed surface you know distorts the light and stuff a little bit but you can kind of maybe make out some of the dents or indentations and things so this crown is a little bit a little bit better than the binger you can at least uh, grasp it and turn it a lot easier still kind of small you know thin profile but being automatic movements you kind of see that a lot Here's the other side a little bit better than the side with the crown on it in terms of the side of the case i mentioned that the straps were screw in pins so the way this works is you unscrew this one underneath which takes the pressure off of the actual pin which is threaded down at one side 
So you unscrew the one on the bottom, take that screw out, and then you unscrew this and the whole pin pulls out. Notice, and this isn't because I changed the strap on it. This is the original strap on it. When this was assembled in the factory, that screw took a little bit of a hit, um, slipping around, not paying attention. You can see all the scratches around the lug on the outside. This is one reason why I'm not a huge fan of screw in pens is because if the person doing the work isn't taking care, you're gonna scratch the lugs, or in, like I say, if they were screwing pins on a bracelet, same thing. If someone doesn't just be patient and take their time, you're gonna end up with scratches that show very clearly externally. This is on the outside of the lugs. So that's uh, that's a done deal. You'd have to you know polish that back up. So they didn't take care of this very well in the factory. Screw's not in great shape and the person was lazy about it. Could scratch it all up. There's you know a little bit of scratching underneath on this side as well. So that is another sort of finishing issue and assembly issue. Let's turn this over and take a look at the reverse. I do like the etching here. They've etched down into the brass or whatever metal this is, and so it gives it sort of you know the goldish color tint, um, unless they've colored that in. I'm not sure, but. It's got the you know the beat rate listed there for the movement, 29 joules. If you look here again, this is the Miyota movement. This is so this is Japanese. I do like the sandblasting here on the rotor. Notice it says 21 joules, 21. They say 29, so that's eight difference. So they're saying that there are eight other joules involved with these little carousel things, little wheels. There's one, two, flip it over, you'll see three and four. Uh, there might be a couple more in there. I'm not sure, again, without taking it apart or again, if that's some sort of an embellishment. That's why they say 29 here, so there's 21 in the movement. And the movement isn't necessarily a, you know, a bad movement. It can be adjusted and will work fine, keep relative okay time. But they've used other jewels in here. See the caliber there, 8151 slash 29. Logo, Reef Tiger. Again, if we look at the screws on the reverse, as I pointed out on the front, you'll notice that they're not near as good or taken care of, maybe is a better term. They just look a lot rougher. Not collared as well. You'll notice here on the bridge, this is just an artifact of the manufacturing process and the machining and the lower quality that they're using. Notice all the scratches and stuff along the bridge here. This pattern design that they've done on the bridges, not near as good as it was on the binger. Again, this sort of metalwork, very roughly done. You might recall me mentioning that I like the etching around this case back a little bit better than what was on the Binger, which is true, except for the actual Binger logo, which had a sandblasted background on it, uh, on the reverse of the Binger. You know, pretty simplistic, basic movement. It's got the date complication, but fairly low end Miyoto movement, but will do its job. Flip this around. And so a closer look at the screws and stuff. Artiste. Anyway, so that's an up-close look at this reef tiger. It's really amazing taking an up-close look at any sort of watches. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of used to it since I work on them a lot. So I've always got, you know, my, my loop on, you know, my magnification going and looking at things up close. But with the macro lens on the camera, taking an up-close look at these finished watches, really gives you a lot of insight into uh, the type of factory that these would have been made in or the, the quality care, the control, uh, all those sorts of things. So it, I, I really, really like giving these macro views of, of the watches. So I'm Brian, this is Watch Complications. Visit my website, watchcomplications.com. Follow me on Instagram, watch underscore complications. I am gonna do one more little video of Brian and the Grail as we sort of hit this waiting stage. I will give more video updates in the future on how the binger is holding up and things like that, but uh, I'll give one more video. In the meantime, keep on watching.